Gemini, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from April 27th to May 4th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind, so we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle that busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Gemini content is uploaded. Gemini content comes out every single Thursday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please feel free to check out the description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to my Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings depending upon subscription level. Now, um... A little bit of astrology before we jump into the tarot. On the 27th, we have at 2.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that waxing crescent moon entering into Leo. And at 5.20 p.m., it'll become the waxing gibbous moon. That's going from first quarter moon to second quarter moon. On my Facebook page, Adventures in Pixie Land, or on my Instagram under Amy Mollican, you can find an entire post about uh, moon faces and what they mean. On uh, that particular day, what this moon entering into Leo means, make time for the people, places, and things that you love in healthy ways. Adjustments are required over the next week so that you can have more fun. I.e., it's getting warmer. Right? People want to go out. They want to do things. There's events. People have barbecues. All of a sudden, people's social lives super get busy. How can you make enough time? What can you rearrange now? What can you condense? What can you be more efficient with? so that you have more time for those social connections while still getting done what you need to get done. Start looking at that schedule, free up some more personal time for yourself. On the 28th, the Wax and Gibbous Moon in Leo, in Leo uh, Sextile Venus in Gemini. Uh, today, you may be a little bit more pleasant or even a little charming. Can you imagine a charming Gemini? Who would have thunk it? It's a good day. Uh, for interacting with others. So if you got a day in which you need to do a hustle and flow, maybe have some important meeting, something like that, somebody you need to convince something of, this is the day. It's the lucky day. Go do it then on the 28th. On the 29th at uh, 6.53 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, there uh, will be a void of course moon. And at 2.59 p.m., that moon is going to go into Virgo. But all morning long, the energy is going to be that Mars and Cancer, Sextile, Venus, and Taurus change is going to be easy to focus on today. Do something just a little unconventional, right? Do something not in the way you normally do it. Change some, some stuff up. That moon in Virgo means there will be extra chores or tasks to do on that day. Uh, be efficient. Vary up your approach. If you ch adapt your approach, you're going to find that you can do something quicker because you weren't expecting to have to do this much in one day, right? Don't stick to the routine if you know you have extra things. Moon in Virgo trine on the 30th. Moon in Virgo trine Mercury and Taurus means sorting through those, through those ideas and plans will help you be ready to take action later. You know, plan now so you can strike while the iron is hot, right? Rearrange that schedule so when something suddenly comes up, you're like, it's not a problem. I got time for that. Right. It'll make you look pretty dang smooth, right? People need to like to see you think on your feet. So it's going to be a think on your feet, you know, kind of, uh, it's, it's going to be hitting coming up here is what they're getting at. Uh, because Monday, May 1st, okay, I will warn you that, my, that uh, May 5th, which is the Friday of that week, we will have a sun in Taurus, moon, full moon in Scorpio, lunar eclipse. So more sudden changes are coming. The universe has got its back boxing gloves back out. Okay? So, 
you might be starting to feel those effects. There might be lots of sudden changes that are starting to go on. And on that first, the universe is actually going to be doing a, a kindness. All morning long, it's going to be the waxing gibbous moon in Virgo with the sun in Taurus conjunct Mercury retrograde in Taurus, which is no good, but Pluto retrograde in Aquarius, which is actually good. And at 7.53 p.m. we'll have uh, EDT, we'll have a void, of course, moon. What this means is it's a great day to focus on new things, especially if those things excite you. When Pluto went direct in Aquarius, it started, it got out those boxing gloves, and it was, you know, taking pop shots at people and knocking people on the ground. I mean, everybody was getting towers and five of wands and five of swords and nine of wands and nine of swords and seven of wands and seven of swords, and all the, any of those combinations equals a tower. So it's just, it's eclipses, it's punching you in the face. Because there are things that need to change within humanity that we haven't been changing fast enough for the divine. So God's got his blocks and gloves out and we've been taking a beating. Pluto in retrograde, though, means, okay, we're going to ease up just a little bit, just for a few days. So you can incorporate these changes before we start punching you in the face again. It's like as if the, they got, it got exhausted and it needed to go back to its corner just to drink some water, take a breather before it comes back out. So, you know, it, Pluto will be retrograde in Aquarius for several months. So when it picks itself back up, it's just still going to be a little bit winded. It won't be able to beat you quite the same way it did. On the 2nd, at 2.09 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that waxing gibbous moon in Libra says, Spend time with the people you care about. It's going to make you feel emotionally secure, but focus on them. Put away the devices. Look them in the eye. Give them your undivided attention. Don't be splitting your attention in a bunch of places. On the third, you have a waxing gibbous moon in Libra, square Mars in Cancer. Find a healthy outlet for all that extra energy you will have this day before you start acting like a jerk. It's going to be an entire day when everybody feels antsy. And when you feel antsy and you get that ants in your pants and you get all squirmy and you're like, but I want to, but I want to do something else. But I, but I want to. Right? Everybody's going to have that, but I want to energy. Like, but I don't want to be here right now. Right? And it can make us act like jerks. But remember that while uh, sometimes we feel antsy in life, it's not somebody else's job to deal with you being a whiny brat. Any more than it's your job to deal with some other adult acting like a whiny brat. Right? Whiny brats is for toddlers who you know don't have any emotional control. Um, the... Fourth, we have a void of course moon happening at 5.17 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 10.32 a.m., it's that waxing gibbous moon is going to go into Scorpio. With Venus in Gemini, square Neptune in Pisces. Focus on improving your boundaries because someone's sure going to want to test them today. That whiny brat syndrome from the day before has got a little carryover there, but it's much deeper and more passionate with that Scorpio energy. So... Somebody's going to try to push your buttons. You need to get to the center of why they're trying to push your buttons in the first place. So you can find a solution. Not a solution. A solution. A solution for your soul. I.e., it'll help you fix the relationship, not just bandage the wound. Gemini. April 27th to May 4th. Gemini, 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 April 27th to May 4th. Motion detected at first door. Gemini, April 27th to May 4th. Gemini, April 27th to May 4th. Oh.
Okay, I will clarify all these cards, but before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to the someone, balance, outcome, summary. This is a general reading. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Just because the whole thing doesn't sound like a story of your life doesn't mean there's not a message in here for you. Um, there is no gender in tarot. You're either walking up to someone and talking or someone's walking up to you and talking. And this whole reading is a conversation between you and another person. Also, relationship is defined here as a continued interaction between any two people. I'm describing energy. You place it in your life and on that relationship where it belongs. Because whoever that is I'm describing, that's the relationship I'm talking about. Nine of Cups there in your past. You were pretty happy. So, you know, you were looking to fill your own cups of happiness. So you were in that, you know, that high moving sort of energy. That's a good place to be, to want to be filling your own happy. Scorpio energy there with the death card. Death, rebirth. Something could have ended. Could have had a fresh start. Maybe something came in the balance there with that justice card. Libra energy. Could have, though, this ending here could definitely be a, a court situation. Or con maybe ending of a contract, a document. It could indicate an ending of a marriage. Um, whichever one that resonates with you. Definitely about trying to find some sort of balance. Present moment. That's you and your own energy. That's Gemini energy. The lover's card. So you may have a choice that's in front of you. You could be contemplating a certain relationship. You could just, you know, be in your just very Gemini self. We'll have to clarify that for sure to find out. Near future, seven of swords, lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. Also a card of strategy. Sliding away, slipping away from something. Maybe slipping away from a relationship. Maybe the ending of a relationship. Because tower card... That's Aries energy, so you could be interacting with one of those, but it doesn't, you don't have to be. It's also a sudden collapse. Like I said, towers are like being punched in the face, and it is normal to start to feel their energy in advance. Uh, so many you, moon card, that's Pisces energy there. It's being in the dark. They're not sure where things are, where you are, what's going on. They could be feeling a little sad. They don't really know what's happening. You here, five of wands. Are you getting into fights? Like, what is this right here? I don't understand what you're doing over here, Gemini. Five of wands, that's uh, competition. That's conflict. This is heated arguments. It could be physical altercations. It could be, a, you know, competitive sports, you know, action-packed sort of sports like football you know it's not really i mean it could be baseball i suppose but you know only those ones where they're punching each other definitely could be hockey though definitely hockey carrying this kind of energy um it's also politics world politics office politics gossip rumors things of that nature it could be getting into arguments with groups of people maybe feeling uh, under attack from a groups of people a world card there. Uh, it's about completion. It's about endings. It's about travel. Uh, you might need to go someplace and this person doesn't want you to travel for some reason. Nine of Wands, defensive energy. So for somebody, this is the hill I'm willing to die on. It's almost like a don't you dare go back there. Or I don't understand why you don't want to go back there. Like that. It could be either one of those. Uh, sun card, that's a card of illumination, that's Leo energy, that's a, something um, being enlightened for you. Seven of Wands, somebody still feeling in defensive energy. I don't know which one of you this is going to be. We definitely have to clarify to find out here. Because we don't have a lot of other energy. I mean, it's Scorpio, Libra, you. A couple of other. So, uh, Seven of Wands. Definitely going to be, somebody's still going to be feeling defensive here. I mean, it's a couple of different defensive energies. If that's the two of you, you're not really getting anywhere. But there'll be something illuminated for you. Maybe you'll understand why someone's defensive or someone will come to understand why you are. King of Swords is any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Aquarius. Also a card of Capricorn. So those are the signs that are on the board. The air signs. Motion detected at front door which you are one of, a Capricorn or a Scorpio. It's interesting. What are you up to here, Gemini? 
What's this Nine of Cups in Gemini's past? Pathway, some sort of journey. The Pathway card always, it's a divinely guided card, but it always reminds me of Gemini's because there's butterflies there on that path. It's definitely a divinely guided path, though. You see the, how the, like the light. The light of the Lord is shining through those trees. And the butterflies are guiding you. It's very idyllic. Like, I would walk that path. What is this Nine of Cups? Nine of Wands. What's this Nine of Cups? It's interesting. That's an interpretation. What's this Nine of Cups? Interesting. Two of Wands. Okay. All right. So remember, this is past energy. So in your past, you could have made a choice. Knight of Wands, any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Sagittarius, also a card of Scorpio. You could have made a choice with anybody in those signs, or you could have been acting in Knight of Wands energy, which is uh, player energy. It's a little inconsistent. There could have been some alcohol involved, led you down a certain path, maybe while you were traveling. Has you now standing at this crossroads that you weren't expecting to be standing at. Of course, another interpretation here, still heavy on the travel because Knight of Wands is movement, where it could just be a lot of fast moving energy between you and another person on a journey, or maybe very quickly you and another person have to travel here in your past. And that is what left you standing at a crossroads. What is this Scorpio energy in Gemini's past? Actually, I really shouldn't word it that way. What is this death card in Gemini's past? What is this death card in Gemini's past? Okay. That's like getting the Ten of Pentacles. That's like a job. This is like a boss, emperor energy. It's father, father figure. Aries energy to me. Could, this could indicate the loss of a job. What is this death card about? Yeah, see, Emperor, Page of Swords. What's this death card about? Temperance, Sagittarius energy there. Temperance, Scorpio energy with death card. Aries energy with the Emperor. There could have been some sort of information you found out about a community. Maybe a community found out about you, somebody watching, possibly online. Somehow has some effect maybe at work. So it could be something you found out about a boss at work. Or something a boss found out about you. And that kind of, uh, or something you found out from your boss. They required you to have some sort of, find some sort of balance. Or if you found out something about a Sagittarius, something of that nature. Maybe some sort of announcement. What is this Justice card? What is this Justice card in Gemini's past? Toil and labor. So contracts and documents surrounding work. What is this Justice card? Eight of Cups, Justice. Well, they're not playing around. What's this Justice card? Seven of Cups. Okay, so definitely something to do. This is like almost like getting the Eight of Pentacles. Definitely something you wanted to bring back in balance. Feels like it's within a work environment, toil and labor there. Has you walking away, looking at other options, possibly walking away. Something you find out that you don't like about somebody you know at work or maybe the amount of work that's required to go into a contract, a document, a marriage. You could be interacting with a Libra. They could, it could be a person who even works in the justice system. Like you might not have any involvement in the justice system at all, but this person could work somewhere in the justice system. Like they could be a lawyer. 
They could be a cop. They could be a judge, right? They could be, you know, even a congressman, right? They could be, or an aide, a legal aide. It could be anything of that nature if you're following where I'm going with that. You could work in one of those environments as well. And this person could just very well be a Libra in, within your work environment or from your previous work environment or something of that nature. What's this uh, lover's card in Gemini's present moment? Family room. Okay. So, you're choosing your family. That's a good thing. What's this lover's card in Gemini's present moment? Okay, that's still you, just your energy. What's this lover's card in Gemini's present moment? Okay. Interesting. Knight of Swords. Any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on the Gemini. Also a card of Taurus. Nine of Pentacles. Is a Minor Arcana Empress card. Libra and uh, Taurus energy. So double Taurus energy going on here. Double Gemini energy going on here. Uh, Cancer energy there with the Two of Cups. The Empress is also a mother. This is also about being single and successful. It's contrary to that family room kind of thing. Like this by itself here would just, it would just constitute, you know, your relationship with your, you know, romantic partner, your husband or wife, whoever that is. But with it like this, hmm, you might have a choice between relationships. Like this, this, I mean, your energy is here twice. Right, so it could be that here is your your choice, right? And it's like it's on the subject of relationships, but it's this one or this one. You could have a choice between two. You could certainly look at it like that. It's also a case of your romantic partner it could be a divine choice. could indicate something to do like you could just be spending a lot of time at home with family right friends being what you know being where you're supposed to be what is this I mean if you're in a romantic relationship or even if you're not if you have like children or whatever you know you're, it's where you're supposed to be you're with your your people your friends and family what's this seven of swords cough an ending. What's the Seven of Swords? It's a Scorpio energy. Queen of Cups. What's the Seven of Swords? What are you doing? I have to ask that. What are you doing? Ten of Wands, the world. Huh. Queen of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Cancer. Also a card of Gemini. So what do you, this Scorpio energy there. These are ending cards. It's also about travel, Ten of Wands. You're trying to come up with some sort of strategy to put an, an end to some sort of burden here, Ten of Wands. You're trying to set something down. You're trying to walk away from something. Not necessarily to like lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. It really kind of feels like some sort of strategy. You know, I did Virgo read before this one. And in Virgo read, uh, th this was in the them position over here. With that seven of wands. And for them, it also very much so, once, when, once translated, meant strategy. It's trying to come up with a plan. There's some sort of plan to set down some sort of burden with this Ten of Wands, have some sort of ending 
between that death card and this world card. Probably, it could be an end to traveling. That could be a thing. But although why you would want to end traveling, I don't know. I mean, unless you're stuck someplace and you just want to go home. Like, if you were already traveling before this and you were supposed to be home in this week, you could get delayed. This certainly could be a, a thing there. You could get delayed, but you don't like it and you want to go home, right? But it's also like you're trying to strategize here. What is this tower card? Because towers are sudden endings. It's the seven of swords. So something is, is all right. So if this was, was an attempt, lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating, or if there's some sort of strategy, because this is essentially the same energy. We're definitely moving from here to here. It's going to bring about a tower. Whether you did that in the future or it's something you did in the past, I don't know. What is this tower card? Six of Swords. What's this Tower card? Yeah, it's definitely an ending. Four of Pentacles. Judgment. Because Towers are endings. This is an end to that Seven of Swords energy. Six of Swords is moving on to calmer waters. It's a choice to move on to calmer waters. But also trying to hold on to something still. Towers don't really let you hold on to things. This is again Scorpio energy. Aries energy careful with this okay towers don't really let you hold on to stuff it's, you know you're going to frustrate yourself if you're trying to fight the towers are divine this is god stepping in and telling you things so just careful with that what is this moon card you can bring yourself troubles if you're trying to fight expectations somebody's in the dark about an expectation what is this moon card about lovers what's this moon card about interesting strength what's this moon card about libra energy it's minor arcana justice card so this is kind of interesting because we have crossovers here with the past and the present this is the minor arcana of the justice you have the justice card here twice so whoever this person is here, that you were trying to balance things out with, that there was, there, were, there was confusion and walking away, and especially if you're the one who did the walking away, whoever this is, this is in that relationship is this, and then it's going to be whoever this is in this present moment, with, you know, like I said, possibly that toy, choice between two, or it could just be that, that it's this, this empress energy that's over here, or this mother energy, right? This person's in the dark about this situation. They, they feel confused. They're confused. Seven of, of uh, Cups is confusion. Moon is still confusion. They're still confused about whatever your expectations might be of them. They could be a Leo. The strength card there. Yeah, they're, they're just in a general state of confusion. There's something you're doing that they don't understand. What's this five of wands? Mature man. If you identify as a mature man, that's you. If you do not, then that is the other person or another person. What is this five of wands? Because the five of wands is a group, okay? What is this five of wands? What is this Five of Wands? Ace of Swords. Hmm. Magician. That's a Virgo Gemini energy. So this person could be within this group of people where there's conflict having, happening. There's going to be communication going on. That's a part of how you'll know. It's almost like you're manifesting a conflict and communication or a realization you're manifesting a realization about a conflict with people you're going to communicate with it's like you're manifesting a communication with these people 
Like maybe there's been silence and you're like, I'm sick of the silence. I want to settle this out. I want to settle it now. Kind of thing. Interesting. Definitely going to have a realization based upon communications with people. What's this world card? Mature woman. Okay, that's interesting. Because you had a mature man before. So again, if you identify as the mature woman, this is you. If not, then this is another person in, you know, probably in that group. What's this world card? Some sort of travel happening. Ten of Pentacles possibly for work. What's this world card? What's this world card? Star. It's Aquarius energy. What's this world card? What's this world card? Two of Pentacles. Juggling. Aquarius energy there with the star. Aquarius Capricorn energy with the world. It's about travel. Somebody might need to travel for work. Somebody might need to juggle something so they can travel for work. Because there is an element of the divine here or a wish fulfillment happening. Someone, I mean, if this if this is not you, then it's the other person has sort of has a wish fulfillment happening here, right? And it's going to leave you feeling a little conflicted. You're going to feel a little, you know, weird, right? About it, because of the conflict realization you're going to communicate with this person who's just was not expecting this they're going to feel a little blindsided by you talking to them about whatever the subject matter is so they might have to travel i, I don't know why it is that i mean the travel is divinely guided they have to do this, so I don't know what the conflict is, whether it's you traveling or they have to travel, depending on if, if you identify as the mature man or the mature woman. What is the Nine of Wands? I mean, the good news is this person's going to match you maturity for maturity. It's not going to be, you know, bullshit child arguments. What's this Nine of Wands? Queen of Pentacles. Death card. What's this nine of wands? Four of swords. Okay, it could be a break of some kind. Death card with the four of swords would indicate an ending, not a beginning. A change would be the same thing. There's um, Queen of Pentacles. Any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Capricorn. Also a card of Sagittarius. So any earth sign or a Sagittarius is a Scorpio energy there with the death card. Cancer energy there with the change. There's just going to be something about this, this change. This may be this trip that they need to go on or you need to go on or this because the four swords can mean a vacation. It's going to bring about some kind of ending. This travel because even the change card can mean a trip. Because I mean it's literally a vehicle. Right? Like the chariot. So this movement of some kind, of, of this earth sign, or this Sagittarius, is going to leave you feeling defensive. Or your trip or movement will feel leave them feeling defensive. Either way, there's some sort of defensive energy about you know movement or travel, possibly for work. What's this sun card? about journey yeah again a trip knowledge of a trip information about a trip what's this sun card the moon okay what's this sun card What's this sun card? 
Ace of Cups. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. All right, because this moon card energy here means it's this person. Like this person who's in the, in the dark of some sort of expectation, undecided. Undecided what, even maybe what they want. And it's sort of like they're going to suddenly find out like, because this is them, right? Suddenly find out that they have to travel or suddenly find out that you have to travel. And then that is, it, in that, somewhere in that travel, there's some sort of reconciliation. So maybe somebody suddenly shows up. They weren't expecting someone to show up, but someone suddenly shows up like, hi, I'm here. And this person just wasn't expecting that thing. Maybe sudden, someone suddenly comes into town because of work. Hey, I happen to be in the area. Do you want to go, you know, grab a drink like that? Or maybe you do that to someone else. It just feels very uh, it particularly sudden. Whatever this is, is sudden. They were in the dark and, it, so, and it feels like it might be you traveling to see someone more than someone traveling to see you or someone traveling to see this person if you guys live at a distance from each other. Because there's a lot of uh, travel cards that usually means there's a distance between you and this other person. What is this Seven of Wands? What is this Seven of Wands? Five of Pentacles, essentially. Because, I mean, it could be, like, I mean, it doesn't mean that you and this person have to live physically distant from each other. You could, certainly. But it, it could mean that whoever is doing the traveling is living physically. Like if this is your romantic partner or your business partner or your best friend, you guys live next door or whatever, right? Whoever they are to you, again, I'm describing the energy. This other person suddenly comes into town. And now they're like going to go see them and maybe you don't like that. Maybe it's an ex or something like that if they're your partner. What is the Seven of Wands? What is the Seven of Wands? What is the Seven of Wands? Yeah. <laughs> Queen of Swords. So this is you. This is you in this defensive energy because Five of Wands here and you're in the Five of Wands there. Right? You're manifesting some sudden realization. You're feeling left out. That's why you feel defensive. That's why you're in this defensive energy. Like you're not sure about this change, about this travel, you don't like it, it's making you cranky, it's because you feel left out, you feel conflicted about this, so it's making you defensive because of some sort of commitment maybe, because like, these people could be getting married, that could be a baby blessing, they could be selling the wares, three of pentacles has a variety of meanings, and one of them of course marriage contracts, documents, things of this nature. Uh, Queen of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Libra, also card of Virgo, does occasionally uh, also present as Taurus. So take that as it resonates. Somebody suddenly traveling or suddenly someone suddenly coming into contact after enough time has passed with this other person or from this group of people leaves you feeling like you're conflicted leaves you feeling defensive you're worried about being left out in the cold what is this king of swords in gemini's summary marriage what's this king of swords in gemini's summary ace of pentacles what's this king of swords in gemini's summary Knight of Pentacles. What's this King of Swords in Gemini Summary? The Tower. King of Swords. Any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Aquarius. Also a card of Capricorn. Like a sudden offer of commitment 
Ace of Pentacles. Maybe a sudden offer, job offer, Knight of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Virgo, also a card of Leo. I'm trying to decide if this, this King of Swords is you or if this is another person. Because some offer comes in. And it could be an offer of marriage. It could be a proposal here that uh, comes in to the, whoever this Knight of Pentacles is to you. And that creates some sort of tower moment. This would be what this break is, this death card. This change, this travel Whatever this is, this commitment, whether it's a romantic relationship for somebody with this Ace of Cups or this, you know, this marriage proposal or whatever this is that suddenly comes in to this person's life, it creates some kind of tower for you. You weren't expecting it. You don't like it. It makes you uncomfortable. And you're going to end up with tower moments because of it. You got yourself some eclipse energy at hand here one we just had and the one you're uh, about to go into. You've been getting it rough too and that's why your readings are so dang long every week now. Uh, oof, Gemini. Advice for Gemini. April 27th to May 4th. Advice for Gemini. April 27th to May 4th. Oof. Okay. So, King of Pentacles, any other sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, heavy on the Taurus, also a card of Aries. It's also about being a boss, right? The King of Pentacles is the last king right before the evolution of the Emperor. And the Emperor takes charge. He's a boss. He's in charge, right? So, taking charge, but understanding that you require patience with this communication. Don't be so insistent. Don't be so pushy. I feel like that's really kind of what the advice is. Slow down. Motion detected at front door. See? There's a lot of been a lot of movement, a lot of change. Slow down, let it process. Don't emotionally react right now. You gotta figure out what's going on here. Because there's a lot of confusion and things you and someone else are just not on the same page. You're fighting with people. You need to get down to the source of whatever that is. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Message for Gemini. Ask your angels. Message for Gemini. Let go. Message for Gemini. Be assertive. That's right. King of Pentacles. You're a boss. Act like it. You know how to conduct yourself. You're an adult. Advice. For Gemini, April 27th to May 4th. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. Advice for Gemini, April 27th to May 4th. Especially if you're being triggered. You are good enough. Full moon in Virgo. Advice for Gemini, April 27th to May 4th. Expect powerful change. New moon eclipse. We just had that on the 20th. And I say, especially for you, because if you're in this defensive energy, if that's where you're sitting at, then that's where your lessons are. Whatever that is that's making you feel defensive, that's a trigger. That is an old wound that you need to go heal. Because if this is your partner and somebody suddenly comes in to see them, you shouldn't feel defensive. You should feel secure in your partnership. Your partner should also feel secure in your partnership. You two should trust each other to, you know, behave accordingly. And if you don't feel like you can trust them or they don't feel like you can, you can trust, they can trust you, then you guys need to go get some counseling and get that situation sorted out, okay? If you don't feel like you can trust someone, if somebody is saying something that is getting to you, then you need to, you know, figure out why that's triggering you and then do what you need to do, which you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. A new romantic cycle begins, new moon in Libra. Even if that means admitting something to someone, 
and apologizing for a behavior you've had in the past. That might be what you need to do. That might be what somebody needs to do to you, though. You just don't know. And that could suddenly come in and you don't like it. Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. That's what's happening on the 5th. Hold your vision. Fixed moon. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. Because remember, all this stuff, towers and all this conflict, it all happens for a reason. It's the universe, God, whatever you, creator, whatever you want to call him. He is getting rid of the toxins in people's life. He is excising wounds and clearing out all the infections so it can be healthy and healed and grow right. So don't fight that. Go with it. Let it, let it go through the other side. Do the healing work. You'll be better off for it. Message for Gemini. Message for your Gemini. Fairy protection. We cherish and pr protect and heal our friends, the animals. We watch over them and see how you love them too. This alliance between our worlds helps us all grow strong. Aw. Do you love the animals, Gemini? I love the animals too. Well, I hope that helps, Gemini, because it is what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.